Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Strategic Command. And you say, well, wait, didn't you just lose that last one there, Wargaming Guy? Yes, I did. But this is a brand new one. We're going to play the Allies on this uh, go-around, and we are going to be starting in 1939. Now, one of the things I wanted you to notice, in case you haven't actually paid attention to this, is when you select the side you want, whether it's Allies or Axis, you actually have the ability to say, oh, I think I'll let the... Uh, the AI control that. Of course, I'm not going to let the AI control any of these guys, but you can choose to do that, and it does make an interesting game. Particularly, I played one through like this. Actually, I played it through both ways, as the Western Allies I controlled and the Russians the AI controlled, and then I controlled the Russians and let the AI control everybody else. It's very interesting. Now, this game that we are going to be playing through here is going to be a little bit different. It'll have my usual settings on all this stuff that goes uh, with me, but... Uh, you'll notice I've called this Churchill's War, and that's because that's because I I decided that uh, you know when I played the Axis campaign I had a, a definite kind of a strategic plan which I mostly followed but not completely. <clears throat> Excuse me, and so I thought in this one why not approach this from the Allied side? But rather than just play to just win, uh, you know, so that's the whole thing. Why not sort of take a Churchillian approach to the war? Now, if you've studied the war, you know that uh, Winston Churchill, the great inspirational leader of the of the uh, not only the British people but the Commonwealth as a whole, uh, he he was an amazing leader. But <laughs> has to be said in all fairness, he drove his generals crazy. Oh, look at that! The HQ actually took that tank. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's really interesting. I wonder if that's the HQ from East Prussia, or I'm not sure. Huh. Well, anyway, and basically Churchill, of course, constantly coming up with new ideas, constantly thinking, very uh, creative, if not always very practical. And, and his essential approach to strategy was, one, he was an opportunist. If he saw something, he wanted to jump on it right then and there, even though maybe it made no sense from a military point of view. And two, he, he like uh, pretty much the entire British High Command, wanted to somehow try and win this war and stay out of France until the last possible second because, of course of the debacle that took place in France in the First World War, which Churchill had fought in, and as a, uh, I think he was a captain. But anyway, he had commanded troops on the front in the First World War uh, after his fall from grace because of the Dardanelle campaign. So um, I thought, why not take that point of view? So we'll be looking closely in the Med, of course, because that's Churchill's rather fictional belief. Uh, the soft underbelly, which you'd think, you know, after the campaign in Italy, I mean, not Italy, in, in North Africa and then Sicily and then the first part of Italy, you'd think you might want to give that up, but he never really let it go. But anyway, and we'll also be looking at other places. So if I see an opening and I think maybe I could grab, you know, Brittany and, and wall it off and build up troops there, or maybe, you know, I can do this or that or invade Greece or whatever, I just may do it. So this is going to force me to be very different in the way I play. So I thought it would be, it could be a lot of fun, it could be instructive, and hopefully a little different than uh, the usual games you're seeing out there. So that's the approach I'll be taking as the allied player, and we'll just see what happens. Uh, as you can see here, of course, and the title, by the way, for this episode, The Indestructible Soul of Poland, is a Churchill quote, and I will try as much as possible to use Churchill quotes or maybe paraphrases or something. Yeah, you bet their morale suffers in all of the titles of uh, each one of these videos, which is going to be tough because, uh, you know, that's a lot of videos. Okay, the UK is in, and the French are in, and there we go. Cranking up the industry now. Got to get serious. So this game, it, those of you that haven't played through is the Allies, because I know a, a lot of people, you know, their main interest is the uh, um, Axis side. Okay, we'll click to dismiss that. 
And Mediterranean Sea, report on Italian preparation for war. Mussolini will start mobilizing. Recommendation, maintain units at Gibraltar, Malta, Cairo, Tunis, and Damascus. Okay. Okay, we're going to send an expeditionary force to France. This is real dicey because if there's two things you know at the start of this game is A, Poland's gone in a matter of turns, and B, Germans will take France. The only question is how long. It's not a question of if, it's just a matter of when. So do you want to to uh, to send units there or not? And uh, I'm going to say yes because you can pull them out as quick as you want. Um, and that's just the, you know, there was really no other choice at that time. Okay. So the Russians, of course, are going to fulfill their side of the Rippentrop Pact. Here we go. All right. So now we're not going to start on the battlefield, as tempting as that is. We are going to start in research because early in this game, the allies are all really behind the curve. So you got to catch up. And you'll notice down here that here's industrial tech. Mobilization for war and transformation of economies to a war footing took time, and this research category represents majors mobilizing their resources to support the war effort, the net effect of increasing the per turn collection of MPPs. That's why this is important, because you need to get as many MPPs as possible. And you'll notice I only have 100 MPPs as the Brits, so that's not happening. The challenge for the, for the allied player and the Axis as well is to think long term and not get caught up in just spending all your MPPs here. But as you'll notice, I can't really buy anything here. So let's look at the French. The French have got 75, so there's really nothing they can get. The United States is a pathetic 35, so we're definitely out. The Ruskies have got 45, and um, these guys have uh, blah, 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 blah. That's Poland, and they have pretty much nothing, so. But we will be coming back to this, especially for the English, the Russians, and the Americans, because uh, that's really important. All right, so let's get the Royal Navy just out to sea. And hopefully, we might be able to slow down their U boats. Probably not, but you never know. Here we go. Let's get the sub over here. Never quite sure what the AI is going to do. The naval forces. Um, so we'll see. I think there's. Where's. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put him out here because we know we got some subs. So there will be subs there probably. And we'll even move you up here. And we'll stick you down here, just in case we got anybody trying to sneak around. Sneak around. Oh, that's right. We got, don't forget, let's put some French guys out here. And let's get down to business. You'll notice that uh, the, the French start not in good shape and with very few MPPs. And it's like, oh, uh, this is not good because these guys have got to be strengthened. So we will for as long as we can, which won't take long, but five is ridiculous. Guys are at half strength, so we're done on the MPP front. So now we go to noble Poland, which Churchill said, the indestructible soul. Well, maybe their soul was indestructible, but that was about it. All right. Can I just? No, I can't. I didn't think so. Um, look at that. They got within one hex of, of Warsaw. Pretty darn good. For the AI, it's actually excellent. Now, sometimes I like to just fool around and be a smart aleck, and I'm going to do it this time. Just to see if I can pull them off the track. Not that it's actually, of course, going to do any good. But in a sense, of course, nothing's going to do any good. You're going to lose. The only question is how fast. So we're going to pull him back here. Put him in Kharkov. Make him fight for it. And you're going to come back here as well. And now the question is, you know, I can hold Posen maybe or at least slow them down there. These guys are all obviously already doomed. So... 
Look at that. <laughs> I I took I took a Germantown. Oh, that's amazing. Um so I know this is gamey and stupid, but it's fun, so you know, come on. Gotta have a little bit of fun now, people. Come on. All right, let's check down here. And as far as the Brits go, we do want to uh, do some reinforcing. Oh, can we upgrade? Oh, we can upgrade the army. Very good. Yeah, we and the mobility in the desert. You're definitely going to want that. Uh, over here, we'll upgrade. And very Oop, can't do that. All right, we'll take the mobility. So that's it for the Brits too, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just pathetic. What these, what the Allies started with, if you even want to count the Russians as allies, I know they were, but I mean, you know, it's not like they were <clears throat> democratic or anything like that. So we can't upgrade these guys. We don't need to reinforce anything. Oh yes, we do actually. Let's reinforce our HQs, Timoshenko, and that yeah, that taps us out. Um, but wait a minute, let's just see. We boy, we got nothing up there. Uh, yeah. Okay, for now that will do just fine. And so, uh, whoops. Yeah, that'll do. We'll just zoom in and we'll see if Poland can survive another turn. I wouldn't say yes, and I wouldn't say no at this point. I honestly don't know. Let's find out. Do you really want to end this turn? Yes, I do. Okay. Ah, Polish destroyers evacuated. Yay. We'll take them. They're not much, but better than nothing. that wouldn't expect that to happen a human wouldn't have done that i doubt it but if they're going to punch through and take warsaw it doesn't really matter go polish fighters fly bravely to your doom actually that's not true What else? Uh, yep, they're doing the smart thing here. The smart thing is to go for Warsaw. The rest of it's... Obviously, you want to kill some guys and take some stuff, but the rest of it's all... Oh, well, they took back that town in a big old hurry. They had a national morale bonus, I guess, for taking their own town. They should have lost a lot of morale for letting it be lost in the first place. There you go. There you go. Yeah, switch your rooting. Boom, he's gone. So now, will the armor advance? No, nope. we're going to tackle you, which is good for my end of it. Oops. Ooh, he's just about toast. And he'll be gone. Yep. Well, they had their one fleeting moment of glory, didn't they? That was very Churchillian when you think about it. Riding your cavalry with your banners flying, your lances in the air, attacking the Hun, taking one of his towns for about five minutes. But still, that would have actually, I think it would have appealed to old Winnie. By the way, I have read on Winston Churchill's life, I finished one biography of him that basically was just the military part of his life wasn't although it, it did cover his childhood pretty darn well i thought um ooh, those dirty russians they're flooding into poland yeah i guess the morale would plummet now wouldn't it um i would like to read manchester's but it's so expensive i mean they want like a ton of money and, and that's for the kindle version it's like i am not paying that kind of money for the kindle version i'm sorry 
Uh, and I don't read that many physical books anymore. I'm a Kindle guy, so there you go. Okay, uh, what have we got? Look at that. The U.S. is 107. The Brits are 149. Can we research anything with that? Yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. That taps us out for this turn, but I am completely okay with that. Now, the French, <laughs> the French are different because you know they're going to die. So the odds that they're going to actually get any research done before they die is pretty long, and so I'm just going to buy guys from him. Now, 107, logistics, no, we, we need, we want to, again, we want to go for industrial and production. They're the most important, and the Russians are, like, pathetic with 54, so... Close that. Meanwhile, to the French. Um, how come we can't buy an army or a corps? I don't have enough. Really? 131, I don't have enough? Okay, we'll wait till next turn then. Except I'm going to be using up more <laughs> MPPs here. Sorry, guys. I got to do it. Got to get these troops up to snuff or close. Okay, Verdun. Look at that, man. Verdun's at half strength. What kind of nonsense is this, people? Don't go letting Verdun get that low. Let's put him up here. Yes, we're, we're going to defend linearly because we don't really have much of a choice. Um, and uh, let's see. We'll put you up there. And... You. Oh, if I put you there, we're going to let the Brits have Lily. Okay, so now here's the question Do we spend MPPs to reinforce? Now, I've spent most of the British MPPs, so I don't think, and, and I think that's what all the minor allied allies come out as the, of the UK. So let's just see. I can do two points. I have 68 MPPs, it says. Who has 68? I don't know. Maybe the U.S.? Huh. Or maybe Russia and... Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure how that works. I've not bothered to check that out. So, I'm going to do it. It's probably dumb. But if I can slow them down a little bit, let's just... Jack that up. And the rest of you boys are on your own. I'm sorry. It's the way the cookie crumbles. So, was that it? Anything else I really need to do? Uh, oh, yeah. Down here. I was going to... Hello. Here we go. Sorry, I'm kind of crazy on the map tonight. Losing control here, folks. Oh, I can't upgrade him anymore. What about you? Oh, this is what I should have done, and I didn't do it. So let's pull you back to get strengthened while we still have uh, Italy still not in the war. We'll just leave you boys right here. And what have I got for Gibraltar? Hmm, okay. All right, we may want to put a core in there, given what happened last time I played as the German. We'll see. All right, let's jump ahead. Polish morale continues to suffer. Yeah, no kidding. Canada jumps in. And the BEF arrives. Half strength, two of their cores. Jeez. And the HQ's half strength. Wow. Not exactly thrilling. But it does show you just how ill-prepared the Western democracies and Russians, as far as that goes, Ah, Primsel Falls. We're for the war. Oh. Nice. Hold on, boys. Come on. Can't see what that... Oh, he dropped one. Yeah, that will probably fall this turn if they want it. Yep, they did, and it did. 
And Warsaw fends off an assault. Ooh, wow. That army's... Oops. He's gone. So now Warsaw can be assaulted again and fends off another attack. <laughs> yeah, baby. Fight! Fight, Poles! Fight! The indestructible soul of Poland must not surrender! Yeah! All right. Yes, I know they're all going to die here pretty soon, but it's cool to play on my end because every turn that it takes the Germans to attack here is one less turn they have available to them to prepare to go into France. So, in the long run, it's kind of like Stalingrad, the, the way some Germans at least viewed Stalingrad. They're holding down other forces in the siege of Stalingrad that could have been used against the main front. This is sort of that way. Poles, of course, <laughs> probably cared to think about it that way. No one can blame them for that. The importance of BEF in maintaining French morale. To stiffen the morale of a force in less than two units in France, still five or more units if they can be made available. Deploy these two different Paris, northeastern France, or the Maginot Line. Yeah, if you, if you put your British troops in the Maginot Line, you're going to get what you deserve which is they will have no chance of survival. That's insane. Okay. What do we do here? Do you want to ban the French Communist Party? Yes, I do. And if the Russians don't like it, that's just tough. It is suggested we force Finland to hand over some territory to us. Sure, why not? Okay. Wow, I can't believe we're still here in Poland. Um, all right. I want, yeah, in fact, that is more important. So we're going to go research. We've got these things going. We've got infantry. We've got tanks. We don't have aircraft. So it's going to take almost all our MPPs to do this. We are doing it. Um, go to the Americans, and what do they have? They've got 179, Whew, just enough to get this guy. And the Russians, they have 91. Okay, well, they're no good. But now, let's see if the French can buy something. What? I don't get this. I do not get this. I thought in the maybe they've changed this since the last time I played the Allies. This is the updated version. How about you boys? Core. Can I get a core? Good. I will take a core. Russians are going to need every warm body they can scrape together from anywhere they can scrape it. That's the facts. So, um, you know, yeah, let's go ahead and get Egypt done. And then we'll focus on France. That's all we can max him out at, huh? How about this guy? Nope. Okay. Let's get over here to the BEF and see what we can do. Um, get him up there to dig in in a hurry. Ah, that's it. That is it. Okay. And the French... Gosh, I hate to, to do this, but since it doesn't appear that uh, I'm going to be able to buy anything right now, I guess what I can do is keep reinforcing my boys. And, yeah, all right. There should be. Yes, there is. He's not in very good shape, but he's going to get transported to the south of France. Oops, hold on. Where everybody wants to go. I'm just sure these guys are going to be so excited. And do I have enough to do this guy? No. All right. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Oh, these two guys. Boy, talk about needing supply. Oh, cool. Yeah, big deal. 
And we'll put you up here and get you to dig in at Monaco. And you will swap you over to here. Okay. Uh, let's see. We don't have anything left for that, do we? Nope. We don't have anything there. All right. Boy, these, these early turns go so fast compared to what comes later, don't they? It's kind of cool. Let's get with it and let the Germans probably take Poland. Um, let's see. Would you like to order the Royal Navy to occupy the ports of... Oh, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, obviously they're not too happy about it, but sorry. There you go. Oh. That's not good. We don't want we really need to get too encouraged. Not yet, anyway. And they're pushing onward. Not that it matters. All that matters now is Warsaw. Really? Ooh! Man, I'm telling you, those Stukas are mean. Der Stukas are mean. Ah! Hello! Oh no! Don't sink my battleship. Oh, whoa! Really? I know early in the game they're not very good at getting subs, but come on. Need to get some destroyers out here. Oop. All right, there goes the Polish Air Force. And it looks like Warsaw's going to fall this turn for sure. But fight it out. Weaken them as much as you can. Make them pay for every, really, inch of ground they take. Ooh, nice. I'm liking it. Ooh, I like that even better. Well, that's okay. You two for one. Not bad. Ouch. Yeah, now we're in the danger zone. <laughs> oh, boy. Looks like it may fall. Damn, I was hoping I could hold out another turn. Nope. Warsaw is toast. So, there you go. All right. So Poland obviously surrenders since there's like three units left on the map anyway. Oh, four. Pozun still holds. But that really doesn't matter. Yep, they're already starting to go to the west to get ready for France. And it's October 25th, so yeah, we did all right. Yep, no kidding. Yeah, Germany honors it. Sometimes they don't. There is a chance that they will not honor the non-aggression pact, but they almost always do. Picked up a hefty little bunch of MPPs. So the front moves. Mussolini's still feeling encouraged. Norway's upset. USSR's not happy with the French. And they're going to give, they actually give some property to uh, Lithuania. Knowing that in a few months they'll take it back when they conquer the entire country. Oh, snow comes early. So, that's going to wrap up Red Army deployment in a future conflict. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Um, that is going to do it for this uh, first video of Churchill's War, Strategic Command as the Allies. We'll start next time with my Allied turn and just see where things go from there. Hope that you enjoyed this, and let me know what you think of my take on this, if you like it, if you don't like it, if you've got any ideas for it, maybe something that you've read that Churchill wanted to do. Maybe we could check into that. Who knows? So uh, just let me know. Please give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome, and a share would be fantastic. So until next time, this is the Wargaming Guy saying thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you later.